everyone, my name is Heather and in today's video I'm going to talk to you about cruising with a baby. Over about the past year or so, I've been getting some questions sometimes repeatedly because people find out that I have taken a cruise with a baby, with an infant, and they want to know what that's like. They want to know about that and would I recommend it. And so in today's video, I'm going to answer some questions that I got from viewers about cruising with a baby. And I'm also going to talk just a little bit more about what that experience is like and maybe some tips and recommendations. My three kids are currently adult and teens, so they're much older now. At least my oldest two had their first cruise experience at a very young age. My oldest son, Andrew, had his first cruise experience with me on the Disney Magic on a seven-night Eastern Caribbean cruise when he was four years old. He was actually exactly four and a half. And it was a very positive experience for him. He's obviously too young to remember it, but we really enjoyed it at the time. And I have a lot of great memories from that cruise. Then my daughter, Megan, this was really interesting. We took her on the Disney Wonder on a four night Bahamas cruise. It was me, my dad, my husband and Andrew. And she was only five months old. And it was uh, the cutest thing because they had little baby life jackets and everything. So. There's something to tell you right away. Yes, cruise ships have baby life jackets. They have specially designed life jackets that are designed for infants and toddlers, and they're different than a regular life jacket. They have a little hood to protect their head. They are more like a coat than just a vest, and they have a tether with a hook to attach the baby to you, to you so that the baby can like float next to you and you won't like lose them and they have their own water activated light and things like that. They don't come with a whistle because they know that the baby will not be able to blow the whistle. Okay, Megan was only five months old when we took her on that Disney cruise. You cannot do that anymore. So the first thing I wanna tell you besides the life jacket is that every cruise line is going to have specific age restrictions. And I know for a fact that there is no cruise line that is gonna allow you to take an infant less than six months of age on board. And in many cases, I think that the minimum age requirement is going to be 12 months. And I, I, sorry, I didn't actually research by cruise line. That would be something that you'd have to look at with each individual cruise line. And I'm going to tell you, it might be kind of difficult to find that information, but every cruise line should have somewhere on their website the minimum age requirement. There's three times that age requirements are an issue when you cruise. One is, how old does my child have to be before they can go on this cruise? And that's when we're talking about the baby thing. The second thing is, are kids or even someone my age even allowed to go on this cruise? And I'll tell you two examples. Virgin Voyages is only for 18 and up. No kids on that cruise. Viking Ocean Cruises also has a minimum age requirement, and I can't remember off the top of my head what it is. It's not 18, but it's it's older than other lines. And then like Saga out of the UK is only for 50 and up. So one thing you want to consider is not every cruise line allows all ages. So keep that in mind when you're researching what cruise line you want to take. And there could be reasons that you want a cruise line that restricts the ages, and there could be reasons that you don't. So something to consider. The third time that age comes up is if you're a younger adult or an older teen, or you have a big family, and it can become an issue with who's booked in each stateroom. And I guess what I'm thinking of is like, if you have in your head that you know, you and your spouse are going to be in one stateroom and you're going to put the kids in the other stateroom. In practical ways, you can do it that way. But for the purposes of booking the cruise and making the reservation, you can't always do it that way. There has to be an adult. And sometimes adult doesn't mean 18. Sometimes for some cruise lines, adult means 21. And so you've got to have an adult on the registration for each stateroom or each cabin, and then plus one child. Now you might end up not actually doing that way and the cruise line's not really gonna care, but for the purpose of booking the cruise, you need to pay attention to that age requirement. Another time that this would be come up is like, 
Say it's a couple of friends from college want to take a cruise together, but they're both only 19 years old. Well, there may be cruise lines that they can't do that. They literally can't do that because they're not going to let anybody book a cabin that's under 21. So keep that in mind. Age requirements can become an issue when you book a cruise and not just for babies. So you want to be sure that you check the age requirements for whatever cruise you're considering booking before you book it. And if it's really an issue, they're going to tell you during the booking process, uh -uh, you can't do that. Okay, I'm going to go through the four questions that I got from viewers. Well, it's more than four, but four different people submitted questions to me. And I'm going to answer these questions and then I might finish up with a couple other tips about taking a baby or a young child on a cruise. The first question is, is it easiest to take a baby on a plane, cruise, or travel by car? I thought this was a really good and interesting question. And I'm actually gonna throw in another form of transportation that she didn't think of when she submitted this question to me, and I'm gonna add train, because I've done that too, <laughs> okay? I have taken a baby on a plane, on a cruise, in a car, and on a train. It sounds like a Dr. Seuss book, but I have done all of these things more than once. I'm gonna take each one one at a time because I can't really say which one would be easiest. There are pros and cons to each. First thing I wanna tell you, when babies are very little and very small and they can't crawl yet or they can't walk and they can't, they're not a toddler yet and they you know, aren't even eating any solid food yet, so either you're breastfeeding or especially if you're breastfeeding, I would say this, or they're just using bottles. Babies, little babies, are very portable. They're small, they're easy. You gotta bring a lot of stuff for them, you know, like diapers and clothes and bottle paraphernalia and things like that. But for the most part, you can kind of just take them anywhere. You just you know, set them over here and, you know, whatever. They're not that hard to take around with you and they're pretty unobtrusive. They're in the car seat or whatever. But there's some times that you, like I mentioned, you can't take a baby that young on a cruise, for example. So the advantages of that can be lost depending on where you're going and what you're doing. And then I would say that between like when they start to eat solid food and sit up on their own from there and then they start to get a little bit mobile where they're pulling up on things, pulling things off of shelves, <laughs> toddling around, crawling around. Between that and when they're fully potty trained, okay, so whatever age they're fully potty trained at, and everybody, if you're potty training right now, just relax. <laughs> My advice to you as a parent of three kids who are all completely independent using the bathroom at this point is uh, just don't sweat it. They'll go when they're ready to go. <laughs> That's what I have to say about that. Okay, but until that point, that I would say that age, so from six months to three, four years old, that is what I would say is the most difficult time to travel with a baby or young child, just because there's a lot of challenges. And no matter what the form of transportation, between six months and age three, four is gonna be your most challenging time to travel with a little one. I'm not saying don't do it. I did lots of traveling with my kids when they were that age, and it was super fun, and we had a great time. I'm just saying that's gonna be the most labor-intensive and least relaxing for you, okay? So no matter what the form of transportation, that age range is the age range that is gonna be the most work. However, people say all the time, should I travel when my kid is gonna to be too young to remember? I hate this question. <laughs> I'm gonna get back to this question in a minute, but I hate that question. Why? Who cares? Nobody remembers anything when they're little, okay? No matter what they tell you, they really don't. You will remember. They will still enjoy the experience when they're little, when they're having it. They will still have fun. They will still smile and laugh and, enjoy, and have fun and they will love being with you and you will still have a great time and you will remember it. Why would you deny yourself 
a fun travel experience just because they're not going to remember it when you're going to remember it. You're still going to have the experience too. You're not sending the baby or the toddler on the trip by themselves. <laughs> so that's my answer to that. And I feel very strongly about that. So when people say, no, 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 we're going to wait until they're older and they can remember it. I can tell you right now, my 17 year old doesn't remember trips we took three years ago. <laughs> so don't use they're not going to remember it as a reason not to take a trip or go on a vacation. If you can have a travel experience, have the travel experience. Go now. You never know if you're going to have the opportunity again. If you have the opportunity to go, go. <laughs> this, I feel very strongly about this. You will find that as life goes on, it gets harder to travel more, especially as you have more kids and they get more expensive. I traveled so much from when I was about 10, when my parents got divorced and my dad started traveling with us until I got married. Honestly, it was getting married when I was 30. So in those 20 years, I traveled a ton. I traveled so much. I took multiple trips every year. I went to Europe multiple times. I traveled all over the United States multiple times. I did a ton of traveling in those 20 years. And then it was marriage and kids slowed me down. And now being divorced and <laughs> my kids being older and it being a little easier to travel with. And I would say even one kid being out on their own because now I have only two other kids to pay for rather than three. Now I've run into other issues like limited money and the pandemic, but as you get older again, then the traveling kind of, you get a resurgence, if you will. So sorry, that was a total tangent. But I just wanted to talk about that because that's something I feel pretty strongly about. Okay, back to this person's question. Okay, taking a baby on a plane. So this is gonna be kind of what I said for all of these. When they're really little and portable, it's pretty easy. When they're in that challenging age, as I said, it's gonna be more challenging <laughs> and it's gonna be more work because you're gonna to have to keep them entertained. You're gonna to have to keep them from running off or crawling or wrecking stuff. You're gonna to have to still deal with diapers, which is a big one. Not only the inconvenience of finding a clean, safe place to change a diaper, but also having to take the diapers with you and also having to dispose of diapers can sometimes be an issue. That's going to be true no matter what form of transportation you're using. We really liked those nice blue scented diaper bags that you could buy that you could put the diaper in and then it masked the odor of the diaper until you could find a good place to throw it away that isn't going to bother anybody. Here's what I'll say about airplanes. Airplanes are relatively easy depending on how long your flight is. Obviously, the shorter the flight, the better. Quick, non-stop flights are the best. My advice when traveling with a baby or a child with flights is don't have any changes. Don't stop. Get on the plane, get off the plane, you're done. Don't change planes three times. Don't Book direct. Direct can be misleading. I talk about that in this video at length. You want a non-stop flight. You want to get on the plane. Okay, kids, this flight is going to be this long. And then you know when you land, you get off and you're done. There's no more flying today. That is your best option with kids. That's what I highly recommend when you're traveling with babies and small children. Take a non-stop flight and make it as short as possible. I mean, there are ways to mitigate the issues with a longer flight and I'm really good at that. I mean, I've actually had people compliment me. Strangers have complimented me on airplanes. What a good job I do of preparing myself and my children for a flight and keeping them prepared and entertained. So I might make a whole separate video about that if you want me to. If you have questions about that, leave them in the comments below. Maybe I will. But there's a lot of things you can do to make a flight easier for a baby or small child, but that's a whole nother issue. Okay, so planes can be relatively easy. Another thing that you could look for with a plane is if, you, if you're pretty confident that your baby or child, which was definitely the case for Andrew, he fell asleep every time we flew when he was little. So every time we flew, I mean, I flew with Andrew the first time when he was six months old and drove with Andrew the first time to Myrtle Beach, South Carolina when he was three months old. So I've done a lot of traveling with very young babies. He always slept in the car 
and he always slept on the plane. Motion and that white noise sound always put him to sleep. So if you've got a kiddo like that, if you've got a baby or a young child that falls asleep with white noise or falls asleep with movement, you're not going to have as many problems. The only thing is if you're taking like a really long road trip and they sleep every time you drive, that might throw you off for their bedtime. Like, you know, if you're driving during the day and then you get to the hotel and now they're wide awake, well, that can be problematic. Andrew's dad and his stepmom actually sometimes drove at night. Now that's hard for the parents, obviously, but if you know your kids are gonna sleep in the car, that could work to your favor. So that's something to consider. I kind of talked about cars there too, traveling by car. Another big factor with traveling by car though that I, I really wanna bring up is car, for the most part, when we're talking about a big vacation or a big trip is gonna be a longer thing. I don't love traveling by car and I've talked about this before. Traveling by car is boring, it's inefficient, and it's long, <laughs> okay? And when you're traveling with young kids, those are three things you don't want to deal with. The other problem that you can run into with traveling by car, and to some extent these other forms of transportation too, is car sickness. Andrew and Ben and me all suffered with car sickness our whole lives, and my brother. So if you're gonna have to add in the additional component of vomiting, that's a whole nother issue. And so if you've got kiddos that really get car sick, the car is no longer your easiest option, okay? So if you've got people in your family that get car sick, I don't recommend traveling by car unless you absolutely have to, because that's a whole nother problem. I mean, we've had issues where somebody threw up in a rental car, in another state and we had to clean it up and you don't want to be dealing with that. Okay. At least on an airplane, there's vomit bags, <laughs> which we have used on many occasions. On a cruise ship, don't let the fear of motion sickness ever prevent you from taking a cruise because it's really not as much as an issue as you think it is. And again, there's other videos that I could make about how to offset the issue of motion sickness on a cruise. Once you're on the ship, I would say that taking a baby on a ship is pretty easy. However, I do wanna suggest that you be prepared to have that baby with you all the time. A lot of people, I think, go on cruises and think, oh, I'm gonna put the kid in the nursery or I'm gonna put the kid in the kids club the whole time and I'm gonna just get to relax and enjoy myself. Okay, well, two things I have to say about that. Number one, What's the point of taking a family vacation if you're not gonna spend time together as a family? I mean, yeah, I understand if you're a married couple and you wanna have like date night over dinner or a little time to yourself to go to the casino or something like that. I mean, I put Andrew in the kids club and I went to the spa, but you know, at, for the most part, I like to take family vacations because we get to be together. So if you don't spend any time together at all, well then I don't get it. Why are you even taking them with you and paying for them? <laughs> the other thing is they might not like it in there, okay? Case in point, took Megan on the Disney Wonder when she was five months old, reserved the nursery. And by the way, if the child is an infant and they have to go in the nursery, so that's going to be younger than, boy, I don't even know. that. Again, you're going to have to check the age cut out for different cruise lines. She hated it. She screamed her head off the entire time that she was in the nursery on the cruise ship. And the only time we put her in there was during dinner at night. So we could have dinner without having to hold this baby because she was too little to sit up in a high chair. And so we didn't get to enjoy dinner. We had to go get our baby back out of the nursery and then we had to take turns holding her during dinner. And so that was a big drawback to that. And we got some cute pictures out of it, but it definitely made the dinner experience less enjoyable for me, especially. Even older kids may not always enjoy going into the kids' clubs. I mean, people just automatically assume your kid's going to want to go in the kids' club. Keep in mind, if your kid is an introvert or they're kind of naturally a little bit shy, they're not going to like going in that kids' club because that's like an introvert nightmare. It's, it's forced socialization with a whole bunch of strangers. And so, like my kids, when we went on our Disney Wonder Cruise in 2017, Megan and Ben went into the kids club once, they did not like it at all, and they're like, we're not going in there again. And they were old enough to make that decision for themselves, and so I was like, okay. And so they just wanted to stay together with me and Andrew and have fun as a family. 
There's plenty of other stuff to do on a Disney cruise for families that isn't in the kids clubs. So just keep in mind, your baby or your toddler or your child may not want to go into the nursery or the kids club on a cruise ship. So you need to be prepared when you go on a cruise to have that baby with you 24 seven. I've taken a baby on a train. I took Megan on a train long cross country Amtrak trip from our home in Wisconsin to Washington DC and back on Amtrak. We did have sleeper cars, but there's no bed for a baby on a train. Okay. She was one, she was 12 months old. She was one year old. And I basically had to sleep in what is a, a twin size bunk, the size of a twin bed. I think Andrew was above me. And then I, I had the two kids in mine. And then I think my dad and my husband were in the other one across from each other. And I had to either have her next to me, which was, you know, I had to be on my side or I put her between my legs or I had to like have her on one end and like fold up my legs. So the problem there was that there was not enough space in that bunk for the two of us. I mean, she wasn't very big, but she was big enough. So if you're traveling on a train and it's going to be a longer train journey than within a single day, just be aware that your sleeping situation with a very small child or a baby is going to be really difficult. And also, again, just like a car, a train is longer. You're going to be on a train for a longer amount of time. I would say for all transportation options, anytime you're taking a baby or a young child on a transportation method, the longer you're on it and the less there is for them to do and to keep them entertained, the more difficult it's going to be. I mean, the one advantage to a train over a car is that you can get up and walk around. You can walk up and down the train as many times as you want. You can go to the dining car. You can go to the snack car. You can go to the lounge car, back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. That will keep kids kind of busy and entertained. Okay. You can't do that in a car. Car, you just got to sit there with your seatbelt on. Okay. But advantage of a car over a train, you can stop and get out and go to a restaurant or go to a park and run around for a while or go to a rest area or whatever. Now that's going to make your overall trip longer but you can stop in a car and do other things and break the trip up. So I can't say which one is better or worse. There are advantages and disadvantages to each, but I, that was very long, but I hope that helped you in deciding best transportation method for you. It's going to depend on you and what you like and your baby or your child. I guess here's the thing. If I had to rank them, boy, I don't even know if I could do that. I mean, it's going to be a personal preference. It's going to depend on where you're going. But honestly, I guess if I, no, I guess if I had to say, I'd say a cruise would be easiest. As far as like easy or hard, I'd say the cruise would probably be the easiest. Except for the fact that you need to be prepared that the baby's going to be with you all the time. But the baby's going to be with you all the time when you're on a plane, a car, or a train too. So there you go. Second question I got was, do cruises have accommodations for babies like cribs and high chairs? Yes. If they permit a baby on a cruise, they're going to have all the stuff you need for them. They're going to have a crib for your room. They provided one for us. They're going to have high chairs in the dining room. They provided that for us. They're going to have all that stuff and they're probably going to have a nursery on board too. Even the more adult type cruise lines like Princess Holland America, they still are going to have, well, depending on what their minimum age limit is, they're still going to have accommodations for babies on the ship. You probably could even, I mean, I don't recommend doing this because it's going to be really expensive, but you probably could even buy diapers, swim diapers, some basic baby supplies in the gift shop on the ship if you absolutely had to. Something I want to add, they will also be prepared to handle child medical issues in the medical center on the ship if the ship allows children and babies. Case in point, on our Disney Magic Cruise, when Andrew was four, on the departure day, he got soot in his eye from the funnel. And I had to take him to the medical center. And the doctor treated him and looked at him and everything. And even called us the next day or a couple days later to check on Andrew and see how he was doing. They charged us nothing, I'm sure, because that was the ship's fault. <laughs> okay. That was not anything that we did, but that was on them. And so they recognized that they didn't charge us anything. But I guess he was very good with him. And just to know that the medical center staff is going to be 
used to dealing with kids if, if it's a ship that allows kids. The one thing as far as equipment, though, with taking a baby on a cruise, bring a stroller. And I would say don't bring your biggest, most durable, super duper, huge stroller with the big bag. No, bring a simple, light umbrella stroller that folds up really small and is really easy to fold up quick and maneuver and all that. That's what we always used when we travel is one of those very simple, light, basic umbrella strollers. Now, bonus, if you can get an umbrella stroller that does have a little basket underneath or a pocket, that is very handy. Cruise ships are massive. They're very huge. And if your baby can't walk yet, and even if they can, they're not going to want to walk all around. The, they're not going to, no. Put them in the stroller, okay? The reason I say that the stroller should be light and portable is because of all the switching around you're going to have to do. You're going to have to go through security at the airport. You're going to have to go through security to get on the ship every time you get on the ship and get off the ship. And they're not going to want that baby to be in that stroller when you go through security. They're going to make you carry, this is if you have a baby and you've never traveled with them before, they do not let you push the baby through security at the airport or a train station or on a cruise ship in the stroller. The stroller has metal. You have to separate that baby from the stroller. If that child can walk at all, they're going to make that child walk through security without you. Okay, so it can be really helpful if there's at least two other people in your party, older child, your spouse, whatever, your partner, one person goes through, send the baby through, and then you go through, okay? They're going to make you go through separately. Just be aware of that. And then if they can't walk, they're a little baby that you're carrying. They're going to make you carry it through without the stroller. So be prepared for that. And when you go on excursions on the cruise ship, you've got the baby with you. You're going to have to fold up the stroller to get on and off the excursion bus, Things like that, or in and out of a taxi or whatever. You don't want to be messing with a big, massive stroller. You want the smallest, lightweight, easiest to fold, quickest stroller you can find. The other option that I would say is really good when you're going on a cruise or any kind of travel, really, if you're going to be doing like excursions or even on the ship, if they're really little, like a baby Bjorn, where you're wearing it in front of you and the baby is either facing you or facing out. I had a baby Bjorn, used it all the time when they're littler. Um, that can be really nice. And then you can be hands-free and you can be walking around and then you don't have to mess with a stroller and you've just got the baby on you. Or some people really like a sling, a baby sling. That works too. Although I like the baby Bjorn because especially when they're like a little older and they can face out, then they get to see everything too. And that's cool for them. Or a baby backpack or a toddler backpack. Those are great too. We had one of those too. You could wear, you'd be wearing that on the, if you're just walking around and things like that. Or when you're on excursions, if you're on a private island, Either having the stroller or having the baby backpack or the baby Bjorn, I would strongly advise bringing one or both of those with you so you have a way to transport the baby and still have your own hands free to do other things. Third question, how do you get babies around the ship? And I just, do you have to have a stroller or something else? And I just answered that. Okay, so sorry, I... I got ahead of myself, but that's how I would advise getting the baby around on the ship. You need to have a stroller with you and or a baby Bjorn or a baby backpack. I definitely say bring the stroller though, because you're not always going to want or be able to carry the baby physically on your person. Okay. And then the last question, did your baby ever cry at dinner or during a show? And if so, what did you do about it? Okay. So, I talked about how Megan cried during dinner when she was in the nursery. But as soon as we picked her up and brought her with us, no, she did not cry. And I don't remember ever a child in a show on a cruise ship. I don't. But here's what I'm going to tell you about that. And this would apply to any place that you ever have a baby or a young child and you're trying to see a performance. I do remember one time that Megan was pretty fussy at Cirque du Soleil at what was then Downtown Disney at Walt Disney World. And a guy, a very rude man behind us actually like yelled at us and got mad. And so I think my husband ended up taking her out. But wait, no, it would have had, it was Ben. It was Ben. It wasn't Megan at Cirque du Soleil. Megan never went to Disney as a baby. Here's the thing about that. Okay. First of all, 
just to share some personal information. I nursed all of my kids and I breastfed them for an extended period of time. As Andrew was not over a year, but the other two was over a year because I wanted them to have the full benefits, health benefits of breastfeeding. And it was very easy and it's completely cheap. It's free, <laughs> okay? Breastfeeding is free. Well, except for like <laughs> the stuff you have to buy for yourself. And I was a master at it, okay? <laughs> I could breastfeed in any location and any situation and nobody would know. I was super quick. I was super discreet. I, you pro, you could have met me in a million places and I could have been breastfeeding a baby. You would have had no idea. I was so slick and so fast and so discreet about it and so good at hiding it that I breastfed my kids all over the place <laughs> and in a thousand different situations and nobody ever had any idea I was doing it. If you can do that or if you can have a bottle ready and you can have it ready to go, you know, you don't have to deal with warming it up or mixing the formula or doing any of that. If, so you can stick it in that baby's mouth at that time when they start getting fussy. Problem solved, okay? If you can get a baby fed discreetly and quietly and quickly, that will solve your problem in a situation like dinner or a show. Now, obviously then somebody's gotta be holding the baby though. So if you're trying to eat, I mean, I could eat while breastfeeding, but if you're trying to eat, that can be challenging. And then again, there's always part two of feeding a baby. You gotta burp them, okay? But hopefully after that, they're quiet, except for the burp. So after that, they're probably gonna be quiet and pretty mellow and happy. They might've even fallen asleep. So then you shouldn't have too much of a problem. The other thing that I would say, if that happens and you're in a in dinner or you're in a show and your baby starts to be noisy and your baby starts to be loud, you're going to have to take them out. You really need to be respectful and considerate of the other people that are in that venue. You're going to need to take that baby or that toddler or that small child or whoever's having a moment. You're going to need to take them out of that environment until they are in a state where they can be in there quietly and calmly. Okay, now... The one thing I'll say, a lot of shows, if you're close enough and the baby can see it, they're going to be interested in that too. They're going to be like, oh, oh, music and dancing and colorful lights and all that stuff. Like the Disney productions, I I don't remember, but I'm imagining that Megan, when she was a baby, was probably totally into it and watching it too. And dinner, I mean, there's people there to look at and there's stuff happening around them and there's stuff to look at. They're going to be fairly engaged. So unless they're super, super tired or they're in pain or they're hungry and you didn't feed them, like I just said, I mean, number one, are they fed? Are they changed? If those two things are done, you shouldn't really have an issue. You should be able to keep your baby engaged and have them looking around at stuff and they should be okay. But if they get to the point where they just, they really need to go to bed or something like that, you or you really got to change your diaper or whatever, you just might have to be prepared that somebody, whoever's in charge of the baby at that moment is going to have to at least temporarily maybe take the baby out. That's just a fact of life when you got a baby. So, I mean, that's not just when you're on a cruise ship, that's anywhere. And that brings me back to the thing I said at the beginning, even though they may not remember it, and even though it might be more work for you, and even though you might miss out on a couple things a little bit, that doesn't mean that you shouldn't take your baby or young child on vacation because you're still going to have an overall very positive experience and you're still going to be making memories with your family and I still think it's worth it. So I would say in conclusion, don't let the fact that you have a baby or a toddler or that they're not old enough to remember, don't let that be a reason why you don't take a baby or a young child on vacation, on a trip, or on a cruise, because you definitely can have a very positive experience. Take the opportunities when you have them. If you have the opportunity to travel, no matter how old your child is, no matter how much more work it might be for you, it's really not any different than dealing with them at home. I mean, that's something I don't think people realize. If you can be organized and plan ahead and think about what you really need to take and what you don't, and just be prepared. It's not really any different traveling with a baby or cruising with a baby than it is having a baby with you at home. It's not. You're just in a different place. 
everything about taking care of your baby or taking care of your child is still the same no matter where you are with them. So that's my advice to you about cruising with a baby and all sorts of other things about traveling with a baby and young children. I hope that this was helpful to you. Thank you so much for taking the time to watch this video. Please be sure to give me a thumbs up down below if you enjoyed it. And please be sure you're subscribed to the channel if you haven't already. Have a great day, everyone, and safe travels.